Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, it is time to build my July TBR. I am so excited to be bringing back my TBR game. As y'all might remember, I decided to go ahead and take a break from it in June simply because of the amazing readathon. Since I wasn't going to be notified ahead of time what the prompts were going to be and I had no idea what I was going to need to read, I decided to take it a little bit easier on myself and omit the TBR game for the month of June. I did do the challenge pulls though, which I will recap in a second. So I'm very happy to be bringing back the TBR game even though it was very unkind to me in the month of May. But it is back this time around and we are going to go ahead and get into gameplay soon. But before we can do that we have to do the challenge polls and before we do the challenge polls we have to recap how I did with the challenge polls from June. So the very first challenge poll was actually a challenge prompt and that was to read a book that had been nominated by the Booker Prize and for that I selected My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyinkin Braithwaite. I actually also needed to read that to satisfy a challenge prompt of reading a book by an African author so it definitely satisfied two reading challenge prompts and I did read that. Challenge poll number two was also another challenge prompt and that was to read a book with pronouns in the title and for that I selected Girls Like Us by Christina Alger, which I did read. Challenge poll number three was to read one of your recommendations and that was The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer, which I did read. Challenge poll number four was to read The Invisible Husband of Frick Island by Colleen Oakley, which was one of my physically owned TBR books, which I did read. And challenge poll number five was yet another challenge prompt and that was to read a book written by either an Australian, New Zealand, or Canadian author. For that, I had originally selected to read Exiles by Jane Harper, which is the third and final book in her Aaron Falk detective series. However, I got a couple of chapters in and I realized, you know what? I just can't do it. I really don't care. I wasn't impressed by the first two books in the series and I wasn't impressed by any of the other standalones that I had read from by Jane Harper but I wanted to kind of like close out the series since I only had one book left and I already owned Exiles but as soon as I got a couple chapters in I was like you know what this is just not doing it for me I have a feeling it's going to end up just like any of the other books and I just didn't care so I went ahead and DNF'd it and DNF'd the series and instead I decided to pick up Meet Me by the Lake by Carly Fortune who is a Canadian author and I did read that. I did also want to say that I'm still currently in the middle of A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass, which was a May challenge prompt and I'm making my way through it. I did start it in May but my reading of it has been very very hindered not just because of the amazing readathon but also because of grad school and to be quite honest just because I'm not really enjoying it all that terribly much. I think so far it's probably one of my least favorite that I've ever read by Sarah J Mass, which I know is a very very unpopular opinion but it's really just not doing it for me. I'm kind of ready for it to be over. I have about 250 pages of it left and I really hope to bust it out by the end of June. I'm filming this on June 23rd so I still have about a week left and my goal is just to get it done and get it over with. I think we're now starting to get to a point in the book where I think it's going to pick up and be a little bit more interesting to me. But so far, it's literally just been Nesta being awful and her and Cassian having sex. So I don't know, there's a lot that's really like not working for me. And I feel like Sarah J Mass had to go through a lot just to create this book just to give Nesta an actual redemption arc. You know what I mean? So I'm not even really invested in the overall plot of the story and I really don't care anything about it. So again, I'm just kind of ready for it to be done. I just wanted to let y'all know that that is still in progress. So we are doing very well and we do not have to take a punishment going into July. All right, now getting into the challenge prompt cup. Now I am going to say right off the bat that the vast majority of the stuff in here, I would say at this point, is stuff that I've already read, I've already satisfied because a lot of what's in here are challenge prompts from the reading challenges that I'm doing for the year. And I've just been working on those as I've been reading books. So there's always a possibility that my challenge polls are going to be something that I've already read. And if so, we're just gonna go ahead and move on until I get something that I can actually read. So let's go ahead and start with challenge poll number one. Okay, got it right here. Ooh, it's tiny. Stephanie Plum. Okay, so I don't think I've mentioned this in a video yet, but I have made the decision to go ahead and stop reading the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich, which actually came as a really big surprise to me because I thought that I was just going to plug my way through it because I've been reading it for a really long time. I was already 15 books into it, but that also meant that I was still at least 15 books behind. And even though I have a really good time with the Stephanie Plum novels, I've just gotten to a point where I really don't want to waste my time on books I know are probably going to be no more than a three-star read. Stephanie Plum's are a good, fun, fast, time. I really enjoy a lot of the characters in that story but for the most part they're forgettable and they all really run together and as much as I've enjoyed my time with it it was just time to let it go. I have already unhauled all of the Stephanie Plum books that were on my shelves freeing up a lot of space. I donated them to a local thrift store. I wasn't even going to try to sell them so there are still a lot of like Stephanie Plum shreds of paper in here. This cup is going to get a reset at the end of the year anyway but I'm not able to do that like in the middle of the year so that's why some of the things in here are already outdated or already DNF'd or already satisfied so so Stephanie Plum is just one of those. All right, let's try this again. Okay, oh, this is another tiny one. Okay, let me unravel it here. 
Savage Lands. Okay, I need to read the fourth book in the Savage Land series by Stacey Marie Brown. I'm a little nervous about it, to be honest with you, because I have actually really enjoyed the first three books for the most part. I think that they are very bingeable and easy reads, but Becca from Becca and the Books really loved this series for the first couple of books. And then as she got further into it, she just really started to dislike the series. So I'm going to go ahead and read the fourth book in this series. And if it just doesn't do it for me, or if I think it's going severely downhill, I might end up DNFing this series as well. I really don't want to. I really don't want to be DNFing these series that I've invested so much time and energy into, but there's only so much time I can waste, right? So we're going to go ahead and give this a shot and then we're going to move on. All right, challenge poll number two. Got it here. A book related to air. That's a challenge prompt that I've already satisfied. So we're going to go ahead and move on. All right, let's try this one. Ooh, The Nature of Fragile Things by Susan Meisner. That is actually one that I have on my physical TBR. So let me grab it really quickly. All right. So this is going to be another historical fiction by Susan Meisner. I have read, I believe, three other Susan Meisners. I really enjoyed two of them. And the third one was just okay. It wasn't really all that great. So I'm interested to see how this one goes about. It says, Sophie Whalen is a young Irish immigrant so desperate to get out of a New York tenement that she answers a mail order bride ad and agrees to marry a man she knows nothing about. San Francisco widower Martin Hawking proves to be as aloof as he is mesmerizingly handsome. Sophie quickly develops deep affection for Kat, Martin's silent five-year-old daughter. But Martin's odd behavior leaves her with the uneasy feeling that something about her newfound situation isn't right. Then one spring evening, a stranger at the door sets in motion a transforming chain of events. Sophie discovers hidden ties to two other women. The first, pretty and pregnant, is standing on her doorstep. The second is hundreds of miles away in the American Southwest, grieving the loss of everything she once loved. The fates of these three women intertwine on the eve of the devastating earthquake, thrusting them into a perilous journey that will test their resiliency and resolve, and ultimately their belief that love can overcome fear. From the acclaimed author of The Last Year of the War and As Bright as Heaven comes a gripping novel about the bonds of friendship and motherly love and the power of female solidarity. So that sounds absolutely wonderful. It has been a while since I've really read a good historical fiction and The Amazing Readathon has really been all about like the thrillers. So I'm excited for a genre shift for sure. All right, challenge poll number three. The Family Remains, another book on my physical TBR. This one is by Lisa Jewell. So let me grab that one. All right, so here it is. So this is actually the follow up from The Family Upstairs, which I read, I want to say it's been about two years now. And I remember during the time that I read that I was very distracted by a lot of things going on. And I didn't end up enjoying it as much as I could have possibly or maybe it just wasn't for me. It definitely featured like a cultish plot line that I wasn't 100% connecting to or following. But this follows some of the same characters. I don't necessarily know how much I need to remember from the first book in order to follow this. If you do know, please leave that down below. All I know is that I love Lisa Jewell. She is now one of my staple autobi thriller authors and I'm really excited to be getting into this one. So this is going on my TBR. I don't want to read the synopsis for risk of like spoiling anything from the first book. So I'm just going to say that it's a follow-up to The Family Upstairs. So excited about this one. All right, I'm hoping to get at least one of y'all's recommendations just because I, I need to read about two of those every single month to keep up on my goal of 24. So I might have to fit one of those some somewhere if I don't end up pulling one organically. Okay, poll number four. Published by Hachette, I've already satisfied that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do this again. Okay, let's see what we got here. Picked without reading the blurb. This is actually one of the challenge prompts that I haven't really satisfied yet. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and kind of scroll through like my Amazon wish list and find a book that I've added that maybe I don't really know anything about. So I don't have anything picked for this right now, but I'm sure that I will during editing. And once I know, I will be sure to go ahead and like pop it up on the screen for you. All right, the fifth and final challenge pull. This is taking longer and longer every single time just because I've already satisfied so many of these. Okay, let's see what we got here. A plot similar to another book. Okay, this is another one of those challenge prompts that I have not yet read a book for. However, I've already picked the book that's going to satisfy this prompt as well as the follow up challenge prompt, which is to read the other book that has the similar plot. So let me go ahead and review what I added to satisfy these challenge prompts and then I will select one of them. Okay, so based on the research that I did when I was searching for something to satisfy these two challenge prompts, I was told that Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid had somewhat of a similar plot to The Book of Two Ways by Jodi Picoult. So I have to 
read both of them to satisfy both of the challenge prompts. For this one, I'm actually going to select The Book of Two Ways by Jodi Picot. So it says, everything changes in a single moment for Dawn Edelstein. She's on a plane when the flight attendant makes an announcement, prepare for a crash landing. She braces herself as thoughts flash through her mind. The shocking thing is, the thoughts are not of her husband, but of a man she last saw 15 years ago, Wyatt Armstrong. Dawn miraculously survives the crash, but so do all the doubts that have suddenly been raised. She has led a good life. Back in Boston, there is her husband, her beloved daughter, and her work as a death doula, in which she helps ease the transition between life and death for her clients. But somewhere in Egypt is Wyatt Armstrong, who works as an archaeologist unearthing ancient burial sites, a career Dawn once studied for, but was forced to abandon when life suddenly intervened. And now when it seems that fate is offering her second chances, she is not as sure of the choices she once made. After the crash landing, the airline ensures that the survivors are seen by a doctor, then offers transportation to wherever they want to go. The obvious destination is to fly home, but she could take another path, return to the archaeological site she left years before, reconnect with Wyatt and their unresolved history, and maybe even complete her research on the Book of Two Ways, the first known map of the afterlife. As the story unfolds, Dawn's two possible futures unspool side by side, as do the secrets and doubts long buried with them. Dawn must confront the questions she never truly asked. What does a life well lived look like? When we leave this earth, what do we leave behind? Do we make choices or do our choices make us? And who would you be if you hadn't turned out to be the person you are right now? So I'm actually really, really intrigued by that. I really always enjoy stories that kind of explore those concepts of is the life you covet really the life that you want? You know what I mean? So I think I'm going to go ahead and give this one a shot. So those were the challenge polls. Now let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. All right, everyone, it is finally time for the next round of the My Bad TBR game. In June, just because of the amazing readathon, I needed as much flexibility in my TBR as humanly possible because the prompts for that readathon were not known ahead of time. So I'm very, very excited to be back doing gameplay, even though the game board was so incredibly unkind to me for the month of May. Speaking of that, just as a reminder, during that gameplay, we finally got all of Blue into home base. So Blue is officially safe and they are no longer playing the game. For that reason, I have gone through and moved all of the blue color tiles out. So there is only red, green, and yellow. And we are going to go ahead and play the game until all of the pawns are in their home base. It's going to get harder and harder to move as they get closer to home base because every single time I draw and they get closer, the less likely I am to be able to move. So I'm going to kind of have to figure out what I'm going to do at that point. But for right now, we should definitely be able to get through this month of gameplay without having any restrictions, unless of course I get another sorry and far more punishments ensue. But now that that housekeeping is out of the way, we are going to do our standard six draws today, starting with draw number one. All right, so off the bat, I have now added another draw to the gameplay because a two means I have to draw again and I have no pawns and start, meaning the only move I have is to move one of these pawns forward. Let me go ahead and draw a color. All right, we drew the color green. I'm gonna go ahead and move the board really quick so that we can see where green lands. This is currently my only active green pawn, so we're gonna do one, two, and that is to read a book that is on someone else's TBR for the month of July. All right, the very first draw was the number two and the color green. This landed me on the prompt to read a book on someone else's TBR. So as I'm filming this, as I mentioned before, it is only June 23rd, and I don't know what's on anybody's TBR. And so I'm gonna to have to kind of watch some of those videos to figure this out. So as of right now, I do not know what I'm going to be reading, but I will definitely have it figured out by the end of July and we'll see what I end up reading. All right, draw number two. I jinxed myself, y'all. I jinxed it. I said it. I put it out into the universe. So I have gotten another joker, meaning one of my pawns has to go back into start. And that pawn is essentially out of gameplay unless I get another two or an ace and can move them out of start. And as we saw from the last time this happened, I got a lot of punishments. So I'm really, really hoping that does not happen this time around because I could really use a very chill reading month after all of the punishments in May and the amazing readathon. So the punishment for this joker is to read a book that is is over 500 pages. So I'm going to have to figure out what that is going to be. I currently don't have too terribly many books on my TBR that are over 500 pages except for chunky fantasies. And I have to see which color is going back in to start. The board has got some serious, serious jokes because it was red that got booted last time. So let me go ahead and boot red back in to start. 
All right, and then I drew yet another Joker, and this time Red once again got booted back to start, and the punishment prompt was to read a book over 500 pages. And so for that, I've actually gone ahead and selected Empire of the Damned by Jay Kristoff. I have mentioned this multiple times on my channel, but for the most part, the vast majority of what I read is listened to via audio just because of a lack of time and a lack of concentration. So whenever I'm reading something physically, I have to listen to it and read with my eyeballs. So I have to immersively read it, and that's basically how I choose to read chunky fantasies like this one, because I don't feel like I could absorb everything that I need to via audiobook. So that's why my reading of fantasy is also so slow. It's because I have to sit down and I have to be in a space where I can actually mentally concentrate on it. And even then I'm pretty much only able to get through like 50 pages at a time. So it's very, very difficult for me, which is why I'm very selective about the fantasies that I choose to add to my TBR. This of course is one of them. I absolutely love Jay Kristoff. I really enjoyed Empire of the Vampire, but that is another one that I actually read only via audio. And I think my enjoyment of it suffered because of that. So this is one that I absolutely want to immersively read and my hold for this book from my library is going to be coming up very soon. And so when I got that punishment prompt, I knew there was really no other book that I could select but this one because this is going to have to be my next immersion read. I'm not going to say anything about this one just because it is a sequel to a very epic vampire tale. A lot of people have compared it in some ways to Name of the Wind because there's very much a story tale aspect. You are following Gabriel, the last Silver Saint. Silver Saints were basically vampire hunters. Vampires have kind of overtaken this world and they're trying Trying to eradicate the vampires, right? And so Gabriel, the last silver saint, has actually been caught and imprisoned by a vampire and they're wanting to learn his story. That's what that first book is all about. And this is going to follow him after the events of the first book. And this one is definitely chunky, but it's actually less chunky than I thought. It's only like 650 pages. It's not even 700 pages. And this feels really thick. So I'm hoping it doesn't take me quite as long to read this as I think it's going to, but this is definitely going to be the one that I prioritize after finishing A Court of Silver Flames. All right, draw number three. All right, so this could be lucky or it could not be because if I draw a red tile, I can move that red immediately out of start, but also that would move red onto a free space, which would very much be helpful because now I've added yet another draw onto this round of gameplay. So let's see what I draw. And of course the board is not going to be that nice to me, but luckily we are right here. We can just do one, two, and that is to read a book with fall vibes. All right, and then I drew yet another number two and green again. And this landed me on the prompt to read a book with fall vibes. So for this, I'm actually going to select Middle of the Night by Riley Sager. I don't physically own it yet, but it's already been added to my book of the month box for July. And I'm basically going to be reading it as soon as it comes in. Y'all know how I feel about Riley Sager. I absolutely love him. And from what I remember about the synopsis of this. It follows our main character and when he was a boy he and his best friend were camping in his backyard and that boy went missing never to be seen again. But now he is kind of like returned home and some weird things are happening. Things that make him think that his best friend might be around. This is probably going to be very standard Riley Sager in that it's going to walk the border between is it paranormal? Is it not paranormal? And I'm excited to see what he can do with it. I absolutely loved The Only One Left. That was his newest release up until middle of the night. So I always go into Riley Sager books with the highest of hopes and we're gonna see if he can deliver. Draw number four. And so it begins, folks. I obviously cannot move red because red is stuck in start. And so that means I'm going to have to take a punishment and I will draw from my punishment cup to see what punishment I am taking for that one. All right, then I drew the number seven, but because I also drew the color red, I have to take a punishment because I could not move that red pawn seven. So I have my punishment wheel here. Now I kind of forgot what I had on that punishment wheel that I used back in May. So I kind of had to hastily create one based on some of the prompts I knew were on there. It's definitely missing a few prompts, but we're just gonna to work with what we got. So I'm going to go ahead and screen record this and we'll see what kind of punishment I have to take. Here we go. Okay, a TBR vet. So this means a book that has been on my TBR for quite a long time. I'm actually running low on a lot of the TBR vets. I feel like I've done a really good job of catching up my TBR to more recent editions, but let me pull up Goodreads and see what I can find out. So when I pull up my wanna read shelf on Goodreads, the very first one that I have is All Your Perfects by Colleen Hoover, which I do have on my physical TBR. However, this is one that is actually part of a series, more like a companion series than anything, but I really do wanna read the other books in the series 
first before I get to this one. So we're going to move down and that's actually The Orphan's Tale by Pam Jenoff, which is another book that I have on my physical TBR. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it. So I actually picked this book up when I was in a half price books in Corpus Christi, Texas. We were visiting my husband's best friend and his wife and I saw this and I grabbed it because I wanted to try another Pam Jenoff. I had read one other book by Pam Jenoff that was okay for the most part. It didn't blow me away or anything, but it did intrigue me enough to want to read more from her. So this says that it is a powerful novel of friendship set in a traveling circus during World War II. The Orphan's Tale introduces two extraordinary women and their harrowing stories of sacrifice and survival. So I'm actually going to have to go ahead and look up trigger warnings for this one because I don't tend to love books set in circuses, especially books set in historical circuses, just because of animal abuse that typically happens. So I'm going to go ahead and check trigger warnings for this one. And if it turns out that there is any kind of that content, I'm going to go ahead and just unhaul this one. And the next book on the list of TBR Bet is Becoming Family by Alicia Whistler, which is the third and final book in her Dogwood County series, which I have really enjoyed. There's a big focus on animals and animal rescue in those stories and also a really cute romance that I typically enjoy as well. But this is going to be the priority. And if not, then we'll go ahead and do that Alicia Whistler. Draw number five. I give up y'all. I give up on this game. I cannot believe that this is literally a repeat of what happened to me in May. But in all fairness, I haven't drawn hardly any jokers up until this point and there are still quite a few left in the deck. But anyway, moving on. All right. And then next I drew a number three and then once again, the color red. And again, I could not move. So I have to do yet another punishment. So let me go ahead and pull up that punishment wheel. Okay, TBR vet again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add that book by Alicia Whistler onto my TBR already. And then if The Orphan's Tale doesn't work out, oddly enough, Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid is the next book that I would have to read. So if that ends up happening, if I have to read Maybe in Another Life by Taylor Jenkins Reid, I will either read it in addition to the Jodi Picot or I will choose to read Maybe in Another Life over the Jodi Picot, if that makes sense. I don't know whether my reading for the month of July is going to allow me to read both of them, but if I end up having to read Maybe in Another Life as a TBR veteran, then I will go ahead and choose this one over Jodi Pico if it comes down to it. Draw number six. All right. Well, I'm actually very grateful for this because this is now going to eliminate any further possibility of punishment that I could get with red being in start. Let me flip the board and we will go ahead and move red safely into home base. And Red is officially no longer playing the game. All right. And then next, we finally, finally, finally got some good luck. We drew a queen. And not only did we draw a queen, but we drew a queen and red, which means I was able to take my poor red pawn who has been suffering such abuses and put him safely in home base, which means he is out of gameplay. So red and blue now are officially safe. They are in their home bases and they are no longer playing the game. And we are that much closer to ending this round of gameplay, which I'm very excited about. And of course, because it was a queen, there is no prompt associated with that movement. Draw number seven. All right, we drew a number three and the color green. So I'm going to have to once again flip the board so we can see where it green lands this time. One, two, three, beautiful book. All right, that will be easy to do. All right, next I drew a number three and the color green and that landed me on the prompt to read a beautiful book. And for this, I've gone ahead and chosen The Honey Witch by Sydney J. Shields. This was actually the May Fairy Loot book. I don't always love Fairy Loot selections, but I really enjoyed the vibes of this one. I've really been enjoying some magical realism witchy vibe books recently. And this one just seems cute and wholesome. And I believe that there is a sapphic romance in here. It says Marigold Claude has always preferred the company of the spirits of the meadow to any of the suitors who've tried to woo her. So when her grandmother whisks her away to the family cottage on the tiny Isle of Innisfree with an offer to train her as the next honey witch, she accepts immediately. But her newfound magic and independence comes with a price. No one can fall in love with the honey witch. When Lottie Burke, a notoriously grumpy skeptic who doesn't believe in magic, shows up on her doorstep, Marigold can't resist the challenge to prove to her that magic is real. But soon Marigold begins to care for Lottie in ways she never expected. And when darker magic awakens and threatens to destroy her home, she must fight for much more than her new home at the risk of losing her magic and her heart. This is one of those fantasies that I really don't think that I need to read with my eyeballs. I think I will do okay listening to it audibly. And I mean, guys, like look at those sprayed edges. I really hope that I love this story just because of how absolutely stunning this book is. So this is the one that I've chosen for that. All right, we have finally come to the eighth and final draw of this round. 
All right, an ace either means I can move a pawn out of start or move a pawn forward, but since I have no pawns in start, that just means either a green or yellow pawn will be moved forward one. All right, green and red got all the action today. Absolutely no love for yellow, but if I move forward one, that works out perfectly because that lands green on a free space, and I am not mad about that. All right, and then the very last draw of the game was another one that was extremely kind to me, and it was an ace in the color green, and that landed me on a free space, which means I don't have to add another book to my TBR, which is lovely because this TBR is already pretty intimidating. It's already pretty hefty. I was really hoping to have a little bit more of a relaxing reading month in the month of July after the Amazing Readathon, but that is obviously not in the cards for me. But for the most part, I'm actually really, really happy with the TBR that I selected this time around. Please comment down below and let me know some books that are on your TBR, whether July or summer. I would love to know because maybe it can give me some some thoughts on what I would choose to satisfy the someone else's TBR prompt. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me a honey bee emoji in honor of the honey witch. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week, one on Wednesdays, one on Sundays, and I would love to see you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with any books that I might talk about in a video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.